Hey there, it's Emily and Jill here from Tutor Success Academy. And we are wondering something. It's kind of a big topic. Are you thinking about leaving the classroom? It's an uncomfortable thing. Yeah, it's an uncomfortable thing to say out loud. But we have seen it in groups that we are in. We are kind of seeing it everywhere. We see it in the news. We know that a lot of educators um, are getting burnout and they are really thinking it might be time to leave the classroom, whether for good or whether for a year or two hiatus. Um, You might be thinking about leaving the classroom. And so if you are, Emily and I both have done it. So we're speaking from experience here. We want to share with you and kind of hold your hand a little bit. What are some things you should be thinking about now to prepare for that maybe several months down the road? So here are some things to think about as you are potentially considering leaving the classroom. As Jill said, she and I, we we left a full-time classroom teaching for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And so we want to share from personal experience. We have done it and she had stressed, we don't want to have you really not consider these points. And so when, you know, May comes around, you're thinking, oh, wait, I should have thought about that, 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 what about this? And be left with all these questions. So Mm -hmm. some of the things we want to consider, here's the first one. And this, I speak from experience, and that is thinking about your savings. And we, when I preparing to leave the classroom as I was starting a family and knew that down the road, this is what I had planned to do. Um, my husband and I, we sat down, really talked about a budget and really worked on what I call aggressive savings. Really every time a paycheck came in, just making a few sacrifices some sh- and just saying, nope, instead of this, we're putting this money aside, whether it it's just be like scheduling those electronic transfers right into your savings, something that puts you really strictly on a plan so that you have that in place just so that you're not scrambling when you do decide, okay, you've left the classroom, but you don't have something to fall back on. And I know from being in a lot of these groups and videos that we've done with people who um, are interested in Tutor Success Academy, that's one of the main points. Can I afford to do this? So you do yep. really want to consider that basic budget consideration, which is building up your savings. Um, and yes. then Jill can piggyback on that. Uh, what was something right. you considered? Right. So some other things. So when you make that switch from, you know, a salary to creating your own income. Now, most of us, we know a few who did not, and they just made that leap and they made it happen. But most of us build our businesses a little bit at a time while we're still teaching. Right. So we start to build our side hustle or our business or our tutoring business while we're still teaching. But of course there's limitations in that. So when I made that big leap, I knew that I didn't have enough business necessarily to carry me over right away because I was teaching full time and commuting and everything. Right. So what I did was I went ahead and looked at some alternative sources of income that could tide me over in those early days of building my business. So when I left the classroom, I immediately signed up to be a substitute teacher. And this would allow me the flexibility of knowing that I could be available, say three days a week in the beginning and focus on having two days for tutoring. And once those two days filled up, then I could open up another day for tutoring and say, I am now no longer available on Wednesdays for subbing or whatever that was, right? And so that's the beauty is that if you can create a an alternate, like some type of side job that doesn't require a lot of effort from you, you know, that you're just going in, earning your money and coming back, but that has some flexibility to the schedule, then you, that will bring you in a little bit of income while you are building up your tutoring practice. And so that is something I think can be really helpful that sometimes we forget that we can do, right? We can sign up to be a substitute teacher. We can sign up to um, maybe just get a weekend job. I didn't have to get a weekend job, but I was, I was willing to do it. So I knew going into this, if it took me a little while to build my business, that would be okay because I was going to substitute teach if I needed to. And I knew if I had to, I could always have a weekend job, you know, just at Target low, something like that. I could, you know, do something on the side to earn an income while I was building up my tutoring business. So just 
think about those types of things. Saving money, you also might in your county, you might have some sick days that you get to cash out at the end, depending on your county. So just think about what are some ways that you can create a financial buffer while you are building the business in the beginning. So that's probably it. Right. And, and while I was still teaching full-time for many, many years, I had um, an, a tutoring business on the side. And this was before mm-hmm. I started family. Jill and I both did. We, we both tutored on the side, you know, after school, whenever. And so we um, had that little bit of a, mm-hmm. a, a buffer. And uh, the way I saw it was that once I left the classroom, I still had connections with some of those families that I was still tutoring. And at the time when I was leaving because I was having twins, I just sort of said, you know, down the road, this is something, if you want to consider, you know, keep in touch with me, you know, through email or something mm-hmm. when I'm ready to begin tutoring again. So uh, that's something to consider. But I think For thinking sure. about that little um, bridge to close that income gap at first, whether it be building up your savings or having to you know, do some alternative and alternative employment, I think can be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, something else to consider, and this is not everyone, um, because you know, when we talk in Tutor Success Academy, sure, we talk about how you know we're both Horton Gillingham trained people and certified and so forth. And we've had that specific training that's, you know, part of our, our niche in reading intervention. Um, but this is not specific. We're not saying that you have to be Gillingham trained, but for me personally, when I knew I wanted to begin my family and eventually exit out of the classroom a few years before I went through Horton Gillingham training, my first training, because I knew I wanted to become more, just focus on that one area and do that well in private practice. Mm -hmm. So do you have to choose Orton Gillingham training? No, perhaps there's another specific training out there that can make you marketable, some kind Mm -hmm. of professional development course, whether it just be, you know, something online, uh, something that makes you attractive so that if you do choose to tutor privately, you can say, I also offer this area of expertise. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's something in executive function skills or homework organization yeah. or math, studies, writing, skills, test prep, things right? like that. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. Right. Um, and so that's where it's, mm-hmm. I'm, we're all, we are no strangers to professional development as teachers, right? <laughs> but no. when you are doing it as a private <laughs> instructor, you're much more like targeted in those professional developments that you choose Mm -hmm. because not everything is necessarily going to um, add to uh, how you show up in the world and what you offer for private services. So not everything is the best fit for private services. Although I happen to think you can do a lot in private services, but if you know that you want to offer math services, but knowing that the children that are coming to you are going to have more needs than maybe what some of your classroom Uh, lessons were revolving around, then you might decide I'm going to go get higher level, like multi-sensory math intervention training so that I can maybe work with students who um, potentially have dyscalculia. I'm not saying that right. Dyscalculia. I'm okay. Great. I was like, I tend to stumble on words. Um, And so, yeah, so you can think about those. Now, Emily did that to prepare to leave. I did, did that after I left. So this is to also let you know that you don't have to do every, don't feel like you have to do everything all at once. You don't have to have everything done to get started. You just want to think about those things. So I did know that I wanted to do that, but I also decided I'm going to wait until I'm doing, I'm, I've started my tutoring business and I have a little bit more flexibility in choosing my schedule. So for me, that was what worked best for me. And I was able to leave the classroom and start a tutoring business and be highly successful without any specialized training. Um, But I wasn't an interventionist at that time, right? Or, you know, I was just, here's what I do. Here's my skill set. Here's how I can help. And I was just clear in what I could offer and who I could help. And I was able to do that. So, So it's nice to have those ideas of, do I need any training or do I want to do any training to make sure that when I leave the classroom, here is the direction I'm going to go and I'm prepared to do that. So having that. Yeah. I find that when you invest in a specific area of professional development that you 
personally select instead mm-hmm. of your district choosing it for you. Cause Hey, you know, the district's always choosing the PD for you and not right. you. But when you, you are the one that's in the driver's seat to choose the training you want to take, you are really, really more invested for sure and make the most of it. Yes. And then beyond our education training, you also want to think about the business basics. Like, do you have an understanding of anything related to business? And some of you might just from your life experiences, but for most of us as educators, we obviously have not had any training running a business. And so that's one of the biggest blocks besides can I afford this is educators telling me all the time, but I don't think I'm good at business. I don't know what to do. Right. And here's the thing. You are totally good at business. If you can be a teacher, if you can manage a classroom, all the things and skill sets that you have for planning for (laughs) everything, I promise you, there's nothing in this world you cannot do if you are a teacher because you have the skills. And so for business, you just need to figure out how am I going to learn some of those business basics that I need to run in an independent education business. And so that's one of those areas where you can be always learning. So for me, as I was, um, as I was in that last year of teaching, especially, but I'd say those last two years, probably I was Mm. listening to podcasts, reading books about businesses. Um, I was like signed up for like little, like mini programs and things just to start learning. And then for me, that February, before I knew I was going to be leaving, I started a business program because I thought if I'm going to be leaving, I need to learn some of these things. I can't just kind of like patchwork my way, you know, to like a little bit here, a little bit there. And so I went ahead and invested that money in learning some like business skills where everything was like one thing built on another. And I felt like I was getting Mm -hmm. a really nice, well-rounded start to my business education, knowing that I would never stop learning, just like in education, we're always learning. So yeah, find your way to learn some of those business foundations or to be like in a community of learning so that you can have that while you are starting to build your business. It will save you so much time. It will keep you from making mistakes that the rest of us had to just make and figure out on our own in the beginning. No, go ahead and do that. It is worth that investment in yourself to get the training and the help and support you need in the area of running an education business, right? Right. And and you can start however you want. You can start small with just Mm -hmm. little bits, or you can dive right in. Right. Um, It's really, it's really up to you. Yes. Um, And in Tutor Success Academy, you guys, please let us help you with that. We have smaller resources and smaller things like master classes just to get you started all the way up to our cohort programs, which are eight weeks and lifetime access to resources in a private community and guest speakers and everything. And so somewhere in there, we can help you to get started and not feel like you have to learn a whole nother thing by yourself. You don't, we would love to help you with that. And so stick around. TSA is where you want to be. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much. All right. If you're making this big step anytime soon, we are encouraging you. We are cheering you on. We are also letting you know that there's a lot of good on the other side. So if you do decide to make that decision, um, just know that there's, there's still a lot waiting for you on the other side. Um, If you decide leaving the classroom is the thing you need to do right now. So we're here supporting you. Okay, bye.